Welcome back to Mentoring Nature Connections with Fraction Nature Walks. Today we wanted to highlight a learning progression from beginning to, well, I guess to be continued. Our intermediate students have had many experiences with nature walks, often taking inspiration from Jillian Judson's walking curriculum book. On today's nature walk, learners noticed there were many leaves that had, in their words, unique discolorations on them. This made us wonder how much of the leaf was green versus brown. Some found samples of leaves that were a third yellow and two thirds green, and some found evidence of half yellow and half green. As we continued our nature walk, it became clear that there was an interest in finding examples of fractions out in our schoolyard. The learners were then given time to explore and search for evidence of fractions without actually picking any nature samples yet. We wanted to encourage students to wander, observe, and be mindful of not picking too many samples from nature, always thinking back to our foraging rule of seven to one, which is, if I can find seven samples of dandelions, then I can pick one. This ensures that the species is safe and can continue to thrive. Some learners took photos on their personal devices, while others made a sketch in their nature journal. When most of the learners had discovered a variety of fraction examples out in nature, they were encouraged to pick one example to bring back to the group so that we could make a fraction clothesline. Again, the learners were familiar with this math routine which was developed by Chris Shore. We had some twine with us which we used to hang between two trees. Then in small groups, learners began to arrange their nature fraction samples on the clothesline. One at a time, they would place their example and then discuss with their peers why they chose that placement. As the learners collaboratively worked together, we wandered between groups and took notes of their conversations on our clipboards, paying close attention to how students were justifying and explaining their reasoning and thinking. A general pattern we noticed was that learners were very confident with their examples of half and quarters, which made their discussions quite short. The samples illustrating thirds were where discussions became lively, enthusiastic, and took longer for students to come to a consensus. When we noticed the learners were winding down with the task, we brought everyone together and debriefed their experiences and wonderings. This led to a learner request for more time and different materials to explore how thirds were related to quarters. We're looking forward to more exploration time tomorrow on this topic.